Joining us now is Oji Ope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Oji. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Yes. How are you? Is there something that looks familiar? <laughs> Could you answer Leave that me question? Are they I left the studio? <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. I love your red tie. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I, mean, uh, I wanted you to know that I, I love it very much. Oh, uh, that like is so thank sweet. You. So, so Audrey put it got today. everybody yes. gifts. <laughs> So you're worse than Dr. Matthew. I'm going to launch mine tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. You look Thank lovely, you. Adesua. Thank Good morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Rufai. Oji, how are you? Thank you so much. I mean, it went round. You're such a lovely person. But please, Oji, help me ask Dr. Abati. Yes. What is it like putting some people on pension? Ask him. <laughs> Can you, you answer? You don't want that on international <laughs> TV. <laughs> no, off camera. Uh, all right. After the show. We'll do it. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, good morning to you viewers. On today's What's Trending, we'll be discussing Bologna philanthropist Bill Gates as he warns countries across the globe of a possible new pandemic following the sack of a female corporal over her pregnancy out of wedlock. Police boss Mohamed Adamu orders a probe and officers of a state security service allegedly kill a policeman in Oshun State, southwest Nigeria. Finally, more jubilation as soldiers Celebrate the sack of the former chief of staff. Well, let's begin with Bologna philanthropist Bill Gates, who's revealed that he's been taken aback by the volume of crazy and evil conspiracy theories circulating on social media about him over the COVID-19 pandemic. In an interview on Wednesday, the billionaire said the presence of social media and a pandemic is a combination that has never been tried before, but he's willing to explore the reason behind them. Let's take a short clip from that interview. This percentage that's really misled by these conspiracy theories, it's unclear to me. There's millions of messages out there, you know, where my name or Dr. Fauci's name is used, but do people really believe that stuff? I'm... Um, you know, we're going to have to get educated about this over the next year and understand, you know, what, how does it change people's behavior? How should we have minimized this, either, you know, working with the social media companies or explaining what we were up to in a better way? Well, in another development, Bill Gates has warned governments around the world, including Nigeria, to start preparing for the next pandemic. In a recent report, the philanthropist said that it is unfortunate that COVID-19 might not be the last pandemic and that a country like Nigeria, which lacks adequate primary health care, needs to invest in building a vaccine factory for the next pandemic. He added that more people die in Nigeria from primary health care deficit every year than the total number of deaths in Africa from the COVID-19 pandemic. You know... Bill Gates have been in the forefront of this pandemic this whole time, you know, from developing vaccines and warning people and talking about, you know, this research that he's been conducting, the Mill and Belinda Gates Foundation. But I think that this um, warning that he has given Nigeria especially is particularly apt because what we really need instead of developing vaccines at this point is to develop infrastructure. What is your take on that? I totally agree with you and Bill Gates. Uh, it's unfortunate that you know, we would wait for a Bill Gates to warn us. I don't think that we need a, a soothsayer or a Bill Gates or, you know, to, or a crystal ball to show us the future. The COVID-19 pandemic is seen as once-in-a-century event. That's because the last time we had anything of this magnitude was in 1918 to 1920, the Spanish flu. Right. But if you look at it, the frequency of um, major health emergencies or ep epidemics in recent times with the SARS, with the Ebola, shows that the next um, global pandemic will not wait till a century to hit. And there are many reasons for that. The social and environmental behavior uh, changes we are seeing driven by human behavior, that alone in itself can bring the next pandemic as soon as the next decade, if not before then. So we don't need uh, uh, Bill Gates to warn us about that. Uh, secondly, about the um, rumors. Theories. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he needs to develop a thick skin because as long as people have opinions, it's not going to go away. As yeah. long as people are not 
informed, they're not properly informed and educated, he would have such rumors and his name attached to it because, you know, he's big in this, in the middle of this, in the center of this. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is huge. They've been investing across the world, especially in Africa. Um, when you interrogate some of these rumors, they don't stack up. Yes. They talk about microchip vaccines yeah. by But you know, Bill he Gates. says he's willing to explore the reasons. So, well, I, you know, I he's am, a great I'm, researcher. I'm all in well, for that. <laughs> I am waiting see. for the reports yes. of those research. Yes. Well, I'm excited about him talking about the volume of factories that are being created across the globe, Dr. Abati. Well, so many issues in that uh, interview that uh, you get, uh, uh, gave yesterday. Maybe we start with him. Yes. He says that Nigeria needs to invest more primary health care. And well, he has a point there. It's an obvious point. But he then says Nigeria should rely on the COVAS facility. Now, the thing is that the COVAS facility is not going to give us enough to be able to uh, administer the vaccines. We're expecting just about 100,000 doses and an additional uh, 42 million doses, which will only cover 20% of the population. For Nigeria to develop herd immunity, we will need to vaccinate up to about 70%. So Nigeria, like other countries, like South Africa is doing now, we need to have a strategy for us to be able to address this pandemic. But when he says primary health care, yes, it's right. The bulk of the population is in the rural areas. But let's take a short break. Absolutely. And then I'll come back to that. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News Channel. Well, we're still on what's trending with uh, OGOP. And before we went on break, I was talking about the primary healthcare infrastructure in Nigeria. If COVID-19 has exposed anything, it is the vulnerability of healthcare systems in African countries. And so if that is the angle from which uh, the gauge is coming, he is right. I mean, remember the case of uh, Ikiti State when Gono Fayemi got uh, these solar-powered refrigerators ahead of the arrival of the vaccines. His plan is to put those refrigerators in the primary health care centers. And we address the concern, the concern whether those primary health care centers actually exist in the various worlds, over 170 worlds in the Kitty State uh, that he talked about. The last time Nigeria paid serious attention to primary health care was under Oliko Iransom Kuti as Minister of Health, and that's like uh, decades ago. Now, he's saying also that the world should prepare for the next pandemic. Right. Now, Bill Gates has been very consistent in that regard. I mean, he, he funds a research center called uh, the Coalition uh, for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. And even before COVID-19, he had given lectures in the UK, in Canada, and he warned the world that there was going to be you know, an epidemic. Worse and than and a then nuclear. months later, we had COVID. Right. So that's one of the reasons why people say, oh, it was uh, Bill Gates and mm. some people who invented uh, COVID-19. And he's now saying the world needs to invest more in mRNA technology. Correct. Because the next uh, pandemic may come. He says we don't know when, but it will happen. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, criticism, the blackmail, uh, I think is undeserved. Uh, to the uh, global response for COVID-19, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has invested about $1.7 billion. But people say, well, Bill Gates is involved in uh, microchip implantation mm -hmm. so as to control people. Yeah. Uh, some groups, uh, you know, in Italy, in fact, in Parliament, recommended that Bill Gates should be taken to the International Criminal <laughs> Court for crimes <laughs> against uh, humanity. When he talked about digital certificates, that was misinterpreted. He was also accused of saying the vaccines will kill over 700,000 uh, people. Now, what we see in that regard is what has been described as infodemic, yes. which is at the heart of the uh, global uh, campaign. And it's responsible for vaccine hesitancy. Uh, but I, as I said, I think uh, people have been most unfair to be this and himself, uh, maybe just to prove uh, that is sincere and is truly altruistic, has taken the Moderna vaccine. Right. He has taken his own first dose right. of it. But you know he was talking about the combination of uh, social media and mm -hmm. a pandemic, that mm -hmm. this never happened before. But I don't think it's just about the social media, because even back then in 1918, when the Spanish flu occurred, a lot of people were saying it was the end of the world. There's always a conspiracy theory yes. when things like this happen. Rufai, your take on the story. I've been reading, I've been studying about the 1918 flu now. In fact, 
That was how they called it the Spanish lady. The flu didn't start from Spain, but they called it the Spanish flu because King Ferdinand then had the flu. And they kept on this wave of infodemic. And it's very bad. So it's not social media. Bill Gates, please, get your mind out of it. It's not a, it's not a deep thing. It's just the way the hatred in the mind of man. And I don't know why man is so wicked. I don't know. It's just the hatred in the mind of man. It's not you setting up a social media platform in place that makes it possible. It's, it just shows the hatred in the minds of people. And that's what they are curating. And that's why social media platforms, WhatsApp, Twitter, and all that, are the curation. They curate a lot of hatred there that is out of the abundance of the mind of man. And man needs to change his mind. Man needs to transform his mind if he wants to transform his generation. It's not today Bill Gates has been saying it. In fact, when Bill Gates came for a wedding for somebody a couple of years ago, he said it, that invest in social welfare of the people, which involves health. And he said that in three, four years ago when there was a popular wedding by somebody's daughter that Bill Gates came for. He said it in this country. But we don't listen. And when we do, we don't do what is right. Are the states not supposed to put in place good hospitals? Are the states not supposed to take care of the people, primary health care center? The federal medical center set up by Obasanjo back in the days, I don't know what has happened to them across every state of the federation. But you know, it is, it is painful that it is still in this same country where we can invest in primary health care that you see wife of governors going to take vaccine in America. And they are saying their husband too will come and take that vaccine. They should fear God. Because I know if they use that money that they are going to take vaccine in America and develop their primary health care centers in Olu and other parts of the country, in Aguleri, people will benefit. It's sad. So I don't know the kind of politicians God gave us in this country. I'm sad. You know, this, you know Yorubas have a saying. They call politicians people that make a society Oshelu. The politicians we have in this country are Ojelus, people that take and destroy the society. And it's bad. So this is an indication. We need to fix our society. Fix healthcare. Because no matter how many Rolls Royces you have, at some point, your life will come down to having a, a, a bed in Lagos. All right. Hospital bed. Good point, Rufai. We'll take another story. Following the sack of a female copperer for getting pregnant out of wedlock, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has ordered an investigation into her dismissal. Nigerians have been expressing outrage over what they describe as a discriminatory law against women and have called on human rights group to also investigate the matter. Dr. Abati, we took the story yesterday. I am glad. It seems like it's the power of social media. The Inspector General of Police, while inspecting uh, police barracks in uh, GRA yesterday, talked to press people and he talked about the fact that he would want to make sure that they investigate the matter while hoping that this will be resolved as soon as possible. I know you mentioned the fact that the law, which has been re repealed, had not been gazetted, but that doesn't mean that they should not uphold the law. But do you know another thing that was in that law that was repealed was the fact that female officers had to take permission from their, um, you know, superior, superior officers, officers before they, before get married. they could get married. Yes. Dr. Abati, I'd like your take on this particular well, subject. Well, I mean, the, the section you are referring to is uh, section 127 of the Police Act. And that had been repealed in the uh, mm -hmm. new Police Act that was uh, signed into law in September 2020 mm -hmm. by uh, uh, President Buhari. Well, the concern is that is it possible uh, that the police hierarchy all the way down to the rank and file uh, will seem not to be aware uh, that there is a new law in place or they are just resisting it. But again, uh, in matters of discipline like this, uh, the uh, affected copra, copra Olajide Omolola, Omolola uh, yes. she can petition the Inspector General of Police. And it's good that the Inspector General of Police uh, is aware of her case. Uh, if indeed it is true that the Inspector General of Police is talking about uh, an investigation, I mean, that inve investigation should not take forever. And the Inspector General of Police has the powers to say that she should be reinstated. And we hope that she will be accordingly uh, reinstated. But the bigger issue is the issue we brought up yesterday about gender discriminatory provisions uh, within the uh, Nigerian system. 
from the criminal code on rape uh, to sections of the Labor Act to other discriminatory practices uh, in NDLA, in other agencies. And even if you stretch it further, even in the private sector, you know, you find discrimination against women on the basis of gender. I understand that there are some banks that recruit only ladies as, uh, <laughs> marketing. Do, as marketing officers, yes. you know, and it's, it's, it's a kind of constructive, uh, you know, Completely discrimination, ridiculous. you know, commoditization of uh, women. Mm. You know, we need to take uh, a holistic look at all of this. And I hope that Copra uh, Omolola uh, Olajide gets, uh, you know, uh, justice. Be reinstated as soon as possible. All right, I well, guess that's all we have for what's trading, is yes. that? Okay, we are out of well, time. Thank you, thank you so well, much. Thank you very much, uh, Eugenica. Absolutely.